It is 2025 and you have decided to learn Flutter, which is probably why you clicked on and searched for this video. And let's hop right into it. Here are my seven steps for how to learn Flutter in 2025. So first of all, do some light reading and some light research on the core Flutter fundamentals. Get a solid grasp of Dart basics. So Dart is the programming language that you use inside of Flutter to build out your apps. Now, Flutter comes with a set of predetermined widgets that you can use for instance, but Dart is the code that you use to build these widgets and put this functionality into these widgets. Focus on these, focus on learning about what state management is, focus on learning about what Flutter widgets are, focus about learning on how to use Flutter plugins or packages, and get some general understanding of how Flutter builds compile and what the programming language does and what the framework is like. This can be reading the official documentation. This can be watching a light YouTube documentary. I'll link some down below on just the general features of Flutter. Number two is to practice with some hands-on projects as early as possible. Now, it's gonna be quite easy for you to go along with some tutorials or with some courses or reading along the examples, but what's really gonna hone in that understanding and the ability to use these and build these apps by yourself is to actually get involved with some hands-on projects. Start with something simple, such as just a button counter app. You click a button and each time you click that button, you increment the counter and that displays it on the screen, for example. And then maybe after that, you can move on to some more complex stuff. But try to do some hands-on uh, things as early as possible. Follow along these tutorials as, to, as opposed to just watching them so that you can develop this deeper understanding of the framework. Number three is to, in 2025, use plenty of the AI-powered tools that are available to you. So I use ChatGPT quite a bit to iterate on my code and to add comments, etc. But there are other alternatives out there, such as GitHub Copilot, such as the new AI IDE called Cursor. You can definitely try to check that out. This should speed up your development. You essentially have a teacher who can correct you and help you along the way throughout. Obviously, it's gonna be a little bit harder to get that core and fundamental understanding of everything if you're not writing it yourself. But if your goal is to build apps and learn how to code as fast as possible, then these tools can be fantastic. I'll also link some of these down below. It's 2025, make sure you use these, don't sleep on them, because if you are, you are going to be replaced by someone who does. Number four is to follow a roadmap of some kind. So for example, you can use the checklist that I have down below on the steps to take, but there are also some good Udemy courses, there's some good YouTube follow along tutorials that provide a longer term overview of what you have to learn and at what stage in order to become proficient at building Flutter apps. So for example, in the beginning, maybe you start with simple state apps that don't really require any state management, it's just locally stored apps with data uh, and that you iterate on and, and change the, the UI a little bit based on it. And after that, you graduate to more advanced things such as fetching data from an external database such as Firebase Firestore or even more complex having an app that uses APIs from other providers such as Stripe payments or similar. And follow along on this journey and this path because if you understand one part of this, it's gonna be much easier to understand the next part. So for example, if you're proficient at working with databases such as Firebase, it's gonna be easier for you to then understand API calls and working with other payment providers like Stripe or implementing uh, payments in your app with Revenue Cat, for instance. Next up is to join a Flutter community and forum. Now, Flutter is a big community. It's starting to become one of the more popular mobile programming languages and frameworks, and there's a big community out there. So head over to Stack Overflow, which is a great resource, but there are also Reddit communities, there are YouTube communities, there are Discord communities with Flutter-specific groups but you can also find even more specific ones. So for example, Flutter FinTech app founders or groups or programmers. Join these, ask questions. People are often more than happy to answer. And there's usually a lot of information to be found out these on these uh, different forums. So make sure you join these, make sure you make use of the community. And once you've started getting proficient, contribute to the community as well so that we can help it grow. Number six is to build real world projects. Again, one of the worst things to do when you're trying to learn Flutter in 2025 is to get stuck in tutorial hell. Tutorial hell is where you just follow along tutorials and you don't really build anything. So you hop on YouTube and you find, ah, oh, here's a task app. Or maybe you found one of my videos, which is what led you here, which is a sneaker display app, for example. And 
then maybe you just follow along this build and you think, oh, wow, I can code in Flutter. But all you're really doing is you're copying someone else who does it and you're not really learning or understanding at all. This is the worst part about learning Flutter because this means you're going to spend a lot of time and it's going to feel as if you're doing and trying a lot. But in reality, you're not really taking any of this information in. So get on real world problems, problems you want to solve. For example, one of the first apps I tried to build or we kind of built was a inventory management app for one of the businesses that I'm involved in. It wasn't great, barely worked, but I tried and I learned a lot from it. And I was trying to solve a problem that was individual and unique to me using what other people had done, but adapting it for my use case. Do this to the greatest extent possible so that you actually learn from what you're doing. Number seven, stay up to date with the latest Flutter development. So Google, who are the actually makers behind Flutter and Dart, do a great job adding and contributing to the library. So often there's a lot of different functionality being added to Flutter. For example, when I started building Flutter in 2019, uh, you couldn't really build Mac apps, you couldn't really build Windows apps, or you could, but it was in beta and it wasn't very good. Now you can build apps for all types of screens. There's solid support for all of it. And there's a lot of different packages that you can use. And there's a lot of different functionality uh, that you can implement into these apps just straight out of the box with Flutter. And if you stay ahead on this and you look into when they update Dart, when they update Flutter, and you know about this, then you're gonna be able to implement this in your app before other people get ahead a little bit, but it's also gonna simplify how you build apps. Because if you look back 30, 40 years, programming then was much more computer level or base level compared to what it is now. Now there's a lot of layers of code between what's your UI writing and your backend functions and what's actually interacting with the machine. And it's becoming simpler by the day and it's becoming faster by the day. And if you stay on top of this, then you're going to be able to uh, stay on top of this curve and then also learn uh, at a higher rate of speed than if you don't do this. As someone who has built and released multiple Flutter apps, these are my main tips. Obviously, we could go into a lot more detail and, and, uh, and do some tutorials, for example. Check out some of my other videos where I do do this. But this is just my checklist of what I would do if I were to learn Flutter all over again in 2025. I'm sharing some of these resources that I mentioned down below. And you can also find my free Notion template, which inside of it has both a development roadmap uh, template as well as an app building checklist that you can use for just this particular purpose. So put your email down, let me know where you send it, and I will send this to you completely for free. If you like these types of videos, then feel free to subscribe. It's completely free of charge, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.